So let's take a look at this problem. It asks to determine the centroid of the quarter cone. And here is the image of the quarter cone. You know, the typical whole cone is, is revolved all the way around in the base 360, but you can see that this one's limited just to the positive x, positive y, that, that first quadrant, if, it, if you're looking at it 2D. Okay, so if you're asked to find the centroid of a three-dimensional object, aren't you asked to find for three parts of the problem? You're asked to calculate the x bar, the y bar, and the z bar. So those are the three parts that uh, tell us where is the centroid of this cone. What I would do too is when you look at a problem like this, and it's so easy to make a math error, and it's sometimes hard to figure out, did I make a math error or am I on the right track? Take a look. What do you think x bar is going to be between? Kind of what's the lower limit of x bar? Could I, should I ever expect a negative x bar? No, that's not reasonable at all. How about an x bar greater than a? No, that's the radius coming out. x bar should be between 0 and a. Likewise, y bar, how about or even one half, you're even limiting it even more. Yeah, agree, agree, less than even a half of an A. But uh, sometimes people will come in with an answer which is so clearly wrong and they just needed to look at it a little bit. Like, let's look at Z bar, what's it between? Zero and H for sure, and you would say even closer probably to one third H, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would think, oh yeah, that looks like it's close to one third H. And so I encourage you to do that if you have time, especially on homework, develop a little insight to like say, what do I expect the answer to be? That way if I get off track, maybe I can fix it or you know, things, you know, to catch my own error. The other is, is you look for symmetry in a problem. And so two of these answers I expect are gonna be the same numeric value. Which two of those answers are gonna have the same value? X bar and Y bar. Yeah, these should be the same. And that's from symmetry. There's real no difference there. Okay, very good. All right, now, uh, what would be a formula to calculate X bar? What would be a formula to calculate Z bar? Let's leave Y bar alone, and let's say if we calculate X bar, that'll be the same answer as Y bar. So what's the formula to calculate the X location of the centroid of that quarter cone? Would it be... 1 over volume to integral of x tilde. The book uses tilde and bar. Tilde is a, um, a symbol for the local uh, centroidal location x for a little element, a little dx, dv, dz, a little d volume, something like that. So dv. Does that look fine for our equation to calculate x bar? How about z bar? Z bar would be the one over the volume, and then we have uh, Z tilde dV. So now you look at uh, the options for the little chunk of volume. The easiest, going all back way back to calculus, would be just dx, dy, and dz. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just now you have a three-dimensional integration, blah, blah, blah. A lot of times it's a little more insightful if you think, I'm going to boil it down to a one-dimensional integral, right? And this problem calls out for what I would say are quarter circles. And so what I did was I went back to the back part of our uh, textbook, which is on the back jacket, and pulled off what is um, a little quarter circle uh, information. And so they tell us the area of a quarter circle, that's one thing I'm gonna use. And then they also tell me the location of that centroid C, and they tell me in the Y location as well as the X location of that centroid C in terms of the radius R. So hopefully all of that makes sense. So somebody says, uh, I'm gonna do little quarter circle disc, you know, so what is the volume, the uh, dv, of that little quarter circle disk? Wouldn't it be the area, one 
quarter, pi. I'm going to stay with r squared for a minute. I have to work that out because it's changing. R is going to be changing. And then dz. Isn't that the dz? The dz gives me the thickness, and so that gives me a volume for a little. So area times the thickness gives me a volume. Okay. Now I think about it. That r uh, is changing. It's it's a... Uh, this R is A at the bottom and zero at the top. You may think this is a pretty easy problem here, but I want to pause right now and I want you to give me an expression for R as a function of Z. And notice whatever equation you give me, plug in Z is equal to zero and you should get uh, A back for that radius. And then plug in Z is equal to H, and you should get zero back for that radius, right? So you want to be able to check that R of zero is equal to A, and R of H is equal to zero. I'm going to pause, walk around, see what you get. So love it, number of you have it, but let me give a little hint. It'll be something like a uh, constant, let's see, constant uh, plus or minus another constant times z. It, it's a straight line. That's what it is. And you just have to work out what these constants are. And those constants are going to be in terms of a and h, right? So just take a look at it. Can you figure out the first constant? Call this the second constant. When z is equal to 0, what does the first constant have to be? Right? And so you just figured out what that first constant is. What's that have to be? A. Okay. How about that second constant? When z is equal to h, what does R have to be? Zero. It has to go to zero. So that second constant says, look it, uh, if I divide by H, then Z, when Z is H, H over H, that's just one. And it uh, looks like if I then take that one, multiply by A and subtract it, wouldn't that give me zero? There's a number of ways to do this. That's just one way to figure it out. Your brain works a little different than other people's brains. Two or three people figured this out. But you have to get this. Okay, so once I get z as a function, or, or r as a function of z, then what I can do is I, can, I have the dv. Let's do this. We come over here and we're going to need this volume right here and that volume right there. So the volume is equal to the integral of dv, just one dv. Okay, well, what is my dv? We just worked that out. That's going to be one-fourth pi r as a function of z squared. So what I'm going to do, this is a bad-looking pi. I'm going to put r as a times one minus z over h. And then that's squared d, z. What do we do? We just put in what that dv is. That dv is 1 fourth pi r squared, but we just figured out what r, r is. It's a, a times 1 minus r over h, or not r over h, z over h, sorry. All of that squared d, dz. So then we're going to integrate. Okay, when we integrate, we're integrating with respect to what variable? Z. What's the lowest value of Z? What does Z start at? Zero. And what does it end at? H. That's our volume integral. Now, you may be good at integration. When I came out of Cal 1, Cal 2, I was ready to integrate the world. Okay. Uh, but on a time-limited exam, maybe you're going to get a lot of credit for setting up the integral, and maybe a not a whole lot for, or maybe not even asked to solve it. Can you set it up? 
Okay, you were working furiously. Did you integrate it? All right. So what did you get for the volume integral? Because you ought to get that first, don't you? You really want to get, after you solve a few of these problems, it's like get this integral for the volume or area if it's 2D. And then I'll put in and I'll do the second integral up here. Right. Okay. So did you get a, did you get a volume for this one? What would you get? You are good. So it's 1 12th pi a squared height. That's what it is. Now somebody can go and they can look for the volume of a cone, the full cone, and it's also in the back cover of the book and I didn't copy it out. And then they can say, you know what, I'll do that We're for the base radius of A and the height H. And then what I'll do is I'll divide that full volume of a cone by one-fourth and they'll verify that this is correct. See that? Don't do it by integration. Do it by checking. Another way of checking it. Now you're ready for a tougher integration, aren't you? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do X bar. Okay, so we're going to divide by the volume, 1 12th pi A squared H. And then we're going to integrate. And our same DV, our same little chunk of volume is there. It's just a 1 4th pi A 1 minus Z divided by H quantity squared. Whoops, I need to put the closing square bracket and quantity squared dz, but I have to put in right here, I have to put in x tilde. What is my x location of the centroid of that, of that little volume element? Can you s yeah, you're going to come right down here and use that, aren't you? Right? And so it's going to be 4 over 3 pi times r, but wasn't r a function of z? It is, and so what we have to do is we have to put in a times 1 minus r over, oh boy, h, close parenthesis, close bracket. I didn't really leave off room, but you see what I did? I, I, I have a 4 over 3 pi. Yeah, that's a Z right there. You're right. Z over H. So this this is R, which is equal to 4 times A times 1 minus Z over H. That's what our R is, divided by 3 pi. Now, you beef up your mathematical skills and do that integral. A little different, a little more challenging. And then... You, you get that X bar comes in at A over pi. Such a simple result, but that's what X bar is. Right? That makes sense? All right, let's do the last integral. I'm going to try and do it down here. Z bar is equal to the 1 over 1 12th pi A squared H. That's 1 over the volume. The integral something I'm going to put in right there, but I'm going to put in 1 fourth pi A times 1 minus Z over H squared DZ. What do I put in right here? I put in Z tilde. What is Z tilde? It's my local um, um, centroid, Z location of the centroid of that little um, disk, that little volume or quarter disk. So for this problem, what is Z tilde? It's Z. It's Z. It's almost too obvious, right? It's too easy. Uh, it was The X tilde was a little more challenging, and you think, oh, all of this has to be really challenging. But no, it's just Z. You mean this Z right there is the same as that Z right there? Yep. That's right. And then you still integrate from the lower limit, from the lower limit of z of 0 to upper limit h. And when you do that integral, which is still a lot of work, but you get that it's h over 4. 
Now, if you went back to the full cone, okay, not the quarter cone, would it have the same Z bar? The quarter cone and the full cone. Uh, I should have grabbed that picture. I don't think I can grab that picture. But t uh, who has their textbook, the very back cover? There is our full cone. And do they show me what uh, Z bar is, where the G is? Is it H over 4? Yeah. It is. Yeah. So even though we did it for a quarter cone, the same location of centroid in the height is, is the same as if it would have been a half a cone, three-quarter cone, or even a full cone. So it's, and it's 